So here we are. Uh, Douglas Crusham recently told NarniWeb.com that he hoped to start pre-production on the silver chair in early 2017, hoped being the keyword. And here we are. It's early 2017. It's only February, but we still haven't heard anything about them starting uh, pre-production. Um, just wanted to do a quick video on just to enter into the record my overall feelings on the silver chair. Um, these videos are really primarily addressed to myself in the future. Uh, so this is for future Brian, maybe five years in the future or so. I think we'll probably have a silver chair movie out by then. So future Brian, you've seen the movie. This is how you felt five years ago when you didn't know much. Um, now, of course, if you're, if you're eavesdropping on me talking to myself right now, um, you probably assume that I'm so excited about, I must be really into these movies and have high expectations for the silver chair to have this YouTube channel and Facebook page and Twitter account and still posting stuff on narniweb.com and doing podcasts and all that. Um, but no, actually, I thought that Wardrobe and Caspian were for very different reasons. You know, okay adaptations and, you know, okay, okay movies. Um, as, far as, you know, as far as adaptation, as far as forcing the Narnia books to be giant, epic, awesome fantasy blockbusters, pretty good job, but I wish they didn't do that. Um, then there's Don Treader, which is just, you know, belongs in a bin with Teletubbies somewhere. Don't waste your time on it. Um, and... Um, and then there's the silver chair, um, which uh, is just, it's sort of a uh, guilty until proven innocent kind of place for me. I'm still waiting for something to get me truly excited, although, um, you know, David McGee sounds exciting. And you know, there's some reasons to be excited about it, but um, I have, I'm still following it and making videos just because I have a real personal investment in these movies. Um, I was thinking recently about the books, and they, um, just getting personal here, I guess, but... I just turn on the news, and it's just, I'm, I'm kind of a cynical person, and I tend to, um, in general, just sort of, um, I guess it's probably kind of fair to say, at least from my view of the world, it's kind of, oh, you turn on the news, just everything just seemed to get worse and worse. Um, and the world is a scary place, you know, it's kind of my view of things. And the Chronicles of Narnia, I just can't be cynical when reading Chronicles of Narnia. Um, they really make me believe in um, simplicity and believe in... Um, uh, right and wrong, and um, honor and chivalry, and um, longing and serving something bigger than yourself, and um, just uh, it's just I just can't be cynical when reading Chronicles of Narnia, and it really, really um, I just need that. <laughs> um, and uh, so it, it's that's, that's just one thing it's done for me personally. It has a very kind of special place in my life, and so the movies, um, it's it really, really matters, you know. If, Filmmakers, if you're watching this, David McGee, maybe, this really matters. This isn't just make an entertaining movie. Please do, make an entertaining movie, but it's not just that. This movie, uh, it really matters to me on a very personal level. That it, um, I, f I feel like a sort of, a, somewhat of a guardian of it, as a fan that it means something to me. Um, just to, um, you know, don't make it exactly like the book. Please don't. Adapt it. Make a great movie. Um, and don't, you don't have to capture every single thing I love about it, about the book, but make a movie that really feels like it's of another level. It's not just a blockbuster. That's really worthy of the title, The Chronicles of Narnia. Um, and I'm kind of waiting for signs that, uh, that they're, they're trying to do that um, with The Silver Chair. I will say David McGee is a very encouraging choice. It's the first time we've really had a name, a screenwriter name, that, who's like well-known. Uh, attached to uh, the Narnia films. Now, Margerson McFeely, who did the other Narnia scripts, um, that they've since gone on, and they're basically the most important screenwriters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. They wrote all three Captain America films. And those scripts, Winter Soldier and Civil War in particular, are, you know, in terms of managing a blockbuster, in terms of we need to get this from the, Marvel wants this from the comic, and managing these other storylines, and you have to make sure you appeal to every person and their dog, and you have to bring in all these storylines and all these different suggestions and blah, blah, blah. In terms of managing a story for a big blockbuster and coming up with something that's cohesive and entertaining, that's really difficult to do, and they did it well. But that's not the place I think Narnia needs to be. And I think David McGee is certainly a better choice. Life of Pi and Finding Neverland are um, more nuanced, emotional, and character-driven. So some encouraging signs overall, I guess, for starters. Um, but I think it's a little troubling they don't have a director yet. I would like to see a director involved at an earlier stage because I don't want them to just find a director that's going to you know, make, make sure it's all in focus and just shoot the movie that Gresham and David McGee have already made. No, find a director who 
It's their story. Give it to them. Just hand them all the keys and let them go. Scary thing to do. Gresham would have to do that and really trust somebody to try things that might not work. It might sound weird, but hopefully it would turn out well anyway. Um, and I don't think Gresham would ever do that with a director. It, it, this is the aspect of Narnia that's interesting, that of the movies that it, uh, on one hand, probably prevents it from being a total disaster, Gresham retaining control, um, but also prevents it from being truly great, I think. Um, you just have to take risks, and you have to be willing to do something that's not proven and might not work. And I think Gresham is understandably scared to do that, um, understandably not wanting to just hand the keys to his stepfather's work um, and just say go, but want to be protective of it. But I think that really prevents the movie from really reaching its full potential. And I think it's going to be difficult to find a director, especially if it's on a lower budget, who would be willing to work with Gresham like that. Um, and that's my fear. They'll find someone who's basically just there to make sure it's all in focus and not actually tell the story. Um, the, I would much rather find them, rather than get like, um, if they hire a director like the guy that did Divergent, whoever that was, or the guy that did Pete's Dragon, whoever that was, um, then I think it's a sign that this is, we could be in for kind of a bland movie that Gresham and McGee have like in the producers, it's got to be like this, find someone who can go shoot our movie. And then we just have to find someone they can control. Um, it's a sign that it's probably, I think it's a really bad sign for the movie basically. It would be a really positive sign if, they, if, if I think if they f hired more of an auteur, like can I'll just go ahead and put it out there. Um, I've said it in my Facebook page and on Arnie Web and other places, but my endorsement for Silver Chair director is Spike Jones. I'm not saying for sure he would be a great choice. I'm more saying that kind of director is what the Silver Chair needs. Um, Spike Jones most recently did Her, which is one of my favorite movies ever. He also did Being John Malkovich in Adaptation. By the way, go ahead and Google Adaptation and just read the synopsis. Um, if you have to, you know, go to IMDb and figure out who Charlie Kaufman is and all that stuff to really understand it, do that. And the whole story of how that story came together, ridiculous. Just crazy, that movie. Um, and he also did, eventually, um, did Where the Wild Things Are, which is by far his biggest, it's the only really big budget movie he's made. And that was a very polarizing movie. Some people, you get, basically you watch it and you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I loved it. Uh, and one thing I really respect about it is that Spike Jones really retained his Spike Jonesness even though he was given a really big budget and it was this giant production which he'd never done before. A lot of times... Um, what happens a lot in Hollywood is you see these directors and they make a couple smaller movies that, you know, there's these small movies, they don't make a ton of money, um, but they, they win awards and they, they're really well received and then some Hollywood executives come along and say, oh, let's get that guy to direct a big blockbuster and we can get like a really talented director with a good track record and we can get him for cheap. And then that director comes in there, they're not used to dealing with a big budget, and they're not used to dealing with the studio wants this, and this person wants this, and managing a whole giant production, and they crumble, basically, and it doesn't work out. Um, someone like Spike Jones is not someone, like, you, you can't just have him make the movie. Oh, here's the script, just go make that now. They would want to take control of it and make it their own and do their own thing with it. Um, and Spike Jones, with Where the Wild Things Are, I think, showed the ability to the willingness to take risks. Um, this is a giant movie, but he was willing to do things that, hey, some people just aren't going to understand this, you know, uh, and try to make a big movie that won't necessarily appeal to everybody. I would love to, you know, make, make a silver chair movie that is not designed to appeal to every person ever. No, there's, not everyone likes the book either. Don't hire someone that's able to manage the production. Don't just hire someone who you know can get it all shot and come up with a cohesive movie that's hopefully entertaining. Get a real storyteller um, that's willing to take risks and uh, try things you don't know is going to work. Um, so with the silver chair, um, I'd say there are some positive signs here, like with McGee. Um, but uh, I, I'm still, I would say I'm not expecting it to be great at this point, And I'm really, really hoping that uh, something happens, maybe a director choice. I'm really hoping something happens soon to really confirm some of the slight hopes I have and get me, just enable me to really get on board with this.